Turn with me to John chapter 11. I appreciate that. Uh, I found that, uh, that uh, song probably about a month or two ago. Uh, and I said, I'm going to preach that. And I, I texted her and told her to find the song. And uh, uh, either she sang it or find somebody to sing it. And I, I appreciate her singing it. She did a good job. Uh, this is kind of a difficult passage to preach because it's so long. Uh, there's a, it's a pretty long story, and you got to have the whole story. And if you've heard me uh, preach very many times, you know that once I get to reading a while, I start stuttering. But uh, y'all bear with me. Uh, we're going to read uh, this whole account of uh, the, the, the Jesus coming to heal Lazarus. Uh, anyone here hate being late? Yeah. Now, there's a few groups of people. Uh, there's, there's the group of people who uh, can't stand the thought of being late. They can't take it. They, they, they just assume not go if they're going to be late. I fall there into is. that category. Uh, and then there's some folks who, you know, they, they, they're going to be on time, but that's just what they're going to be, on time. I'm talking right on time. And then you've got folks who know they're going to be late, and, don't, and, and it's just, it is what it is. They're going to be late. Uh, the, you know, like like the old saying goes, they're going to be late to their own funeral. Um, I, I know some folks like that, and you know which category that you fit into. Uh, but uh, this passage today, we find out that even when, like the song said, even when Jesus is late, he's still on time. Amen. Jesus' late timing is always perfect, and, and whenever he's four days late, he is still on time. Read with me, along with me. And we're going to start in verse 1 and we're going to read uh, to verse 34. And then we're going to really get into our message this uh, morning about verse 35. So uh, verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, whom he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God and the Son of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Catch on to that verse. Remember that verse as we go forward. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Uh, when he uh, had heard that when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Because he seeth the light of this world of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that he may that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he be asleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of the, of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Lazarus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye, uh, to the intent ye may believe. Nonetheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, uh, unto his fellow, uh, fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in a grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And when many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto the Lord, unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast only been here, my brother had not died. 
But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection day. Uh, on the last day, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth and uh, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had said so, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but he was coming that, into that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast only been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And they said, Where have you laid and then he said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning thankful for all the things that you give us in this life, Lord. Thankful for all the things you do for us. And Lord, I just pray that you would come here and be welcome in this place this morning. That you would be in every heart, in every mind, in every pew. That you would be here in this pulpit, Lord, and that your words would be that which would be spoken and not my own. I pray that I would decrease, Lord, and that you would increase. And Lord, I just ask that you be with us this morning as we study your word. And I pray that if there be somebody here who needs to make a decision for you, that today would be that day. Lord, I thank you so much for Jesus Christ, and it's in his precious name I pray this morning. Amen. Amen. The first 34 verses of this uh, chapter here tell us a story of Lazarus uh, losing his life. A couple of verses that I want to point out to you. I told you verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he was uh, said this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might there be glorified thereby. We're not going to discuss this verse just yet, but I want you to tuck it into the back of your mind and remember what Jesus said whenever they told him that Lazarus was sick. Uh, first of all, uh, we, 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 he said this sickness is not unto death, but yet we see Lazarus is dead. So we'll, we'll discuss that. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Another thing that I want to point out is whenever Martha came to Jesus, whenever uh, she, she, in verse 21, when she ran out to meet Jesus, she said, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not be dead. Uh, this, 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 she, she had given up hope that her brother had died and it was over with. Mary did the same thing uh, in, in verse, uh, uh, thir what was it, 32. She said, if you had, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother had not died. But notice, Martha, even whenever, uh, throughout the death, even though she knew that her brother was dead and that Jesus was late, Jesus wasn't on time, she did not give up on the Lord. She did not get mad at the Lord. She did not uh, think that it was uh, out of the realm of possibility for the Lord to do anything because she said, uh, I know that thou can, I know that thou canst do, uh, oh, let me find it, I tell you, I tell you. Whenever I try and quote scripture, she said, uh, I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Uh, she knows that the Lord is still in control. How many of you, whenever the Lord isn't there, or we think he isn't there, whenever our prayers isn't answered, whenever something doesn't go the way we want to, how many of us forget about the Lord? How many of us forget that he's in control? 
You see, a lot of us, we think we're the one in control. We're not the one in control. If we're in the one in control of our life, then we are in trouble. We need the Lord controlling our life. We need the Lord in the driver's seat. There's a sign I seen one time, and I put it out here, that if Jesus is your co-pilot, swap seats. We don't need to be guiding our, our, our life. We need the Lord guiding, and we're following in His footsteps. That is what we need to do. But uh, let's get into verse 35. This is where mainly we're going to be discussing. Uh, but but uh, verse 35, the shortest verse, the famous verse, all of us can quote it, right? Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? There's a lot of faults. A lot of faults. But my, uh, the, the, what I'll just say is what I, the conclusion I've come to is I don't know. I don't know exactly why Jesus wept. Uh, I, I believe that he was sad that his uh, friend had died. Uh, but uh, people say, well, why did he weep if he's going to bring him right back to life? I don't know. I don't know why Jesus wept. But uh, I also believe that this shows that Jesus was human. Uh, how many of you have lost loved ones? All of us, right? It's okay to cry. It's all right to cry. It's okay to, to have feelings. Uh, Jesus Christ was human and he had feelings. Verse 36, and said, the Jews, behold, how he loved him. Jesus loved Lazarus. Uh, he was a friend of Jesus's. He was someone who Jesus cared about deeply, uh, we, we had spent time with him. It, we see in, in passages of the Bible that uh, he was, uh, this was a family that was dear to the Lord's heart. What is it uh, that was said earlier in the chapter? Jesus, the one you love, is sick. Uh, you know, but do you know something this morning? Jesus loves us just as much as he loved Lazarus. Amen. Did you know that? That you are just as dear to the Lord as Lazarus here. Uh, that, that, that he cares about us just as much as Lazarus. Verse 37 says, And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? They right along, right along there with Mary and Martha, you know, saying, uh, you know, it, he, he healed the eyes of the blind. He made those who couldn't walk, walk. Uh, if he would have just come instead of uh, lollygagging wherever he was uh, for, for a few days, if he would have just came to, the, to, to this man, he could have healed him, right? Well, well, well why didn't he come? Uh, there's a song. Uh, Another song, uh, but it's more of a quartet deal. Anybody, my name is Lazarus. I don't know if you've heard that song or not, but it's talking about the fellow who, who they let in. Uh, the four guys were holding the bed to the fellow who was lame, and they brought him to Jesus and said, uh, one of the fellows said there that was carrying his bed said, yeah, I know Jesus healed me when I was blind, but, uh, you know, this fellow here is worse off than I am. The other fellow said, yeah, you know, uh, uh, whenever I was... Uh, couldn't speak, you know, he, he healed me, but this fellow here is worse off than I am. The other fellow said, yeah, my hand was withered, uh, and Jesus healed it, but, uh, you know, this fellow here, he's just a hopeless cause, and then the fourth man said, hi, I'm, you know, my name's Lazarus, and they said, well, I guess if he can heal the dead, then this man is not so bad off. Our first point is coming in verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave uh, when, when, uh, where she laid upon it. In verse 39 it says, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, and the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Our first point is he was undeniably dead. Uh, he was dead for four days. Now they didn't have the uh, type of uh, uh, technology that we have to, in, in this day, you know, somebody could die on a Monday and we have their funeral on a Saturday and everything is okay. The body's preserved. They didn't exactly have this. They would put spices and such on there to cover up the stench. But uh, after four days, a body starts to decompose, does it not? And I haven't been around very many four-day-old human bodies, but I, I, I have seen uh, people or, 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 or animals being on the side of the road uh, after it's been there about four days if it doesn't get eat up by something after four days it stinks 
I have, uh, you know, you have, have a mouse die in your house. You can smell that thing. That's just a little old mouse. Imagine this human uh, has been dead for four days. He was undeniably dead. There's no question this man was dead. Uh, you know, there, there's even some thought, I've read commentaries where they say that uh, in Jewish culture it was believed that the spirit hung around uh, the body for three days and then after that it would leave and go to heaven. Well, uh, so even then the spirit's gone. So in, in, in Jewish culture they could they believe, you know, there was almost a little bit of hope for three days. The spirit jump back in the body, I guess, and come back to life. But four days, that spirit's gone. All right, that, 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 there's no, no no hope. This body is dead. It was undeniably dead. Taking this a different way, you know, whenever we're sinners, we're undeniably dead in our sin. Uh, the Bible tells us the wages of sin is dead. Uh, there is no hope for uh, a sinner. There is no hope to uh, when we're in our sins, when we have uh, commit our first sin, uh, when we're just but a child. You know, we uh, have no hope right there. And we doesn't, it doesn't get any better as we get older. In fact, I think it gets worse. We learn to sin more. We learn <coughs> how to sin better and get better at it. Uh, but once we have sinned, we are undeniably dead in our sins. Verse 40. It says, Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hast heard me always, because, but because of the people which stand by, I said it. And they, uh, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Uh, quick thought here. Everything Jesus did was for the honor and glory of God. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Everything that we do is to be for the honor and glory of the Lord. How many of us, given the opportunity and given that we could raise people from the dead, would puff our chest out and say, look at me. Y'all you know, stand back and watch, watch what I'm fixing to do. You know, Benny Hinn's one of them. He, he'll, 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 you know, do one of them deals at them and then they, they get healed, you know. Uh, if you're ever on YouTube, look up uh, Benny Hinn and the lightsabers. They, they Photoshop a lightsaber and he's whopping them with it. It's real funny. But, uh, you know, he, that, they screen people beforehand that, that say, oh, I've got a problem, you know, and uh, that, well, I'll, I'll say that you healed me. And then he's just got it made in the shade because if they don't get healed, well, it's not his fault that you didn't have enough faith for me to heal you. You know, makes a whole lot of sense. But but how many of us would 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 boast in what we could do if we could raise the dead? If we could walk across over there to that cemetery and say, hey, come up out of that ground. And people would do so. Uh, we would boast a bit. But Jesus here, he makes it very clear. He looks up to the Father and he says, Lord, I can't do it without you, Father. I can't do it without you, first of all. And then secondly, he says, thank you. Why? Because he had faith. You know, something, something that uh, kind of come across my uh, mind the other day is, you know, Jesus, as we look throughout the Bible, Jesus himself had faith in the Father. Jesus had faith in the Father. Was he human? Absolutely. Jesus was human. He's 100% God, 100% human. Jesus had faith in the Father. He said, I thank thee, for thou hast heard me. And knew, uh, and and I knew that thou hast heard, heardest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus did everything that he did for the honor and glory of God. You know, we're told to do the same thing. In Matthew chapter five, uh, it tells that we should do good works for who? For the Father, so that they may see our good works and follow us. So that they may see our good works and, and praise us. That they may see our good works and praise the Father. Honor the Father. That's who we uh, uh, are, are to do things for in this world. Verse 43. This is a good verse here. It says, And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. How many of you would have been standing around saying, 
what is he doing? What is he doing? Man's been dead four days. Man's been gone four days. Uh, well, you know, we rolled the stone away and you can the stench, you can smell. This man's been dead. There's no hope. What's he even wasting his breath saying, Lazarus, come forth? He calls. The third point this morning is Jesus called. Did you know that if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, he's calling you right now? Amen. If you're here this morning and you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ and you can hear it, it's almost audible. You can hear it, Him calling you. And here's the thing about it. Uh, you know what it is. Even a lost person knows whenever they're under, under conviction of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know how I know that? Because I've been there. I've been there. When even when you don't know Jesus Christ, when, when you, maybe you're as far away from Him as you can get, whenever you come under conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know what it is. Because He calls. You think Lazarus didn't know who was calling him? I believe he did. I believe he knew it was Jesus. You know what Jesus is calling you. He's calling you because he loves you. He's calling you because he cares about you. He's weeping over the condition of your soul. Just as he wept for Lazarus, Jesus wept. Jesus is weeping over your lost soul this morning. Did you know, do you know that the Bible teaches us that it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to, the, uh, uh, for, to, to salvation to Jesus Christ? Calvinists can take that one. Jesus Christ cares for all people, loves all people. He weeps over the fact that you've rejected him all this time. You don't think it hurts the Lord Jesus Christ whenever he died for you and you reject him? Can you hear Jesus calling this morning? Verse 44. And he that was dead came forth. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about him with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Jesus called out to Lazarus. Lazarus heard and came forth. How many of you this morning, when you heard the call of Jesus, you came forth? I'll tell you this morning, uh, whenever I remember, whenever I, I, I was being burdened in my heart, about being lost when I knew that I had no hope other than Jesus. I was knew that I was undeniably dead. I knew that if I were to have the, a car crash as we were going down the road and I were to die, even though I wasn't but six years old, I knew and I understood that I was lost and needed Jesus. And I heard the calling. And I answered the calling. Jesus calls each and every one of us this morning. There's nobody who's uh, not good enough for the Lord to call. Jesus died for the sins of the whole entire world so that all could come to life. We have the same opportunity as Lazarus. If you're here today and you're lost, you're dead. You're undeniably dead. You're, you're gone. You have no hope except in Jesus Christ. Lazarus, he was dead. Wouldn't you say he was in a hopeless spot? He was gone. Dead, no life. Yet he lived again. Verse 45. There were many of the Jews which married, uh, which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Lazarus was probably, as we mentioned, decomposing. He probably was decomposing his Organs were probably, uh, you know, black. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But it wasn't. They weren't working anyhow. Uh, they were decomposing. He started to stink. But but but, do you think for one second that whenever Jesus called him and he came out, that he wasn't made whole again? I, I believe that. I, I I was asked that question one time in seminary. The teacher was uh, asking us, uh, uh, "Well, how do you when he was decomposing? What do you think happened when he came out?" And you know, I thought about it, and I said, well, uh, I think that whenever Jesus called him to come out, I believe he came out whole. I believe he came out perfect. You know what happens whenever the Lord calls us and we answer? We're made perfect. 
We're made perfect. There is no longer, uh, uh, no longer are we a burden uh, to sin, a, a prisoner to sin. No longer are we bound by sin. No longer are we undeniably dead, but we are alive in Christ Jesus. Because when Jesus does the healing, that's what happens. Whenever Jesus does the calling out, that's what happens. He makes us pure, perfect. Uh, this man was rotting. You say, I'm too far gone. I'm too far gone. I, 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 I've done a whole lot of stuff. This man was decomposing, rotting. Probably had bugs on him, eating him. Sorry for the picture, but can you get it? He, this man was gone. He was too far gone. Jesus called and he came. Jesus called and he came. This morning, if you think you're too far gone, that is just not the case. You can't out -sin God's grace. God's grace has is, is covered all the sin of all mankind for all of eternity. And today, he's calling for you. Just as happened with Lazarus. Uh, people seen the hand of Jesus. I mean, verse 4. I told you we were going to come back to it. Read it again for you. It said that the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Did you catch the last part of verse 45? I'll read it for you again. It said, uh, but when, when, when they had seen the things which Jesus did, they believed on Him. I, I'm not no. I, I, I'm not no. I'm not no. That'll prove my point anymore. I'm not no Bible scholar. Okay, I'm just not. Uh, but to me, that means that they were saved, right? People seen what Jesus did, and they they they, they was there. They saw Lazarus was dead. They they knew that he stank. They knew he was dead four days. They knew all the little critters were in there, probably eating on it. And they saw Jesus call him, and he came forth. And they said, I want a Savior like that. You say, I'm too far gone, right? That's, your, that's what you got to say. I'm too far gone. I can't be saved by this Jesus. I've just done too much. How much of a testimony could you be whenever your life gets turned around? Amen. Folks will see you and say, that fella ain't the same no more. That lady ain't the same no more. They got Jesus. I want some of that Jesus. We can be a testimony. For the Lord. We should be a testimony for the Lord. This morning, has the Lord called you? Is the Lord calling you? You know, it's not just for salvation. The Lord calls us for all kinds of things. You know, the Lord has a will for your life. He has a plan for your life. Where is that plan? What is that plan? Only you and the Lord know. The Lord called me to be a preacher, pastor one of his churches, along with other things. But that's what the Lord's put on my life. What's your calling? I've told you many times before that just because the Lord didn't call you to be a preacher and stand in front of, the, uh, in front of a congregation and preach the Lord's message doesn't mean that my calling is any more important than anyone else's. It's a calling of the Lord, and that makes it as important as things come. Are you following along with the Lord's will? Are you in God's will for your life? Uh, I believe that first, uh, the Lord calls us all to a couple of different things. Number one, He calls us to salvation. He calls us to come to know Him and be forgiven of our sins. Secondly, he calls us to be baptized and join one of the Lord's churches, a local New Testament church, and to plug in and to get involved. And, and third, he calls us all to preach. You say, uh, not like this, maybe not in this setting, but we're all called to herald the message of God. We're all called to tell those about Jesus Christ. I know those three things for a fact, everybody in here is called to do. If you're not doing one of the three or you haven't done one of the three, then you need to get on your knees and ask the Lord for help, uh, for repentance, and to do those things, especially the salvation. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, today is the day of salvation. Today is the time to get that right. Jesus' timing is never wrong, folks. It's never wrong. I can remember whenever the Lord called me to preach, it was at the right time. 
It was at the right time. Did I understand all of it? No, nope, sure didn't. Was I a little bit scared? Yeah, sure was. Uh, do I still get nervous about it sometimes? Absolutely. Uh, uh, because uh, the, it's what the Lord has for my life. I want to do it right. Every one of us here this morning should search out what the Lord would have us to do in our life and to do it. Imagine how strong this church here could be if everybody was in the will of God and they were doing the best they could at it. The Bible tells me that 12 folks turned the world upside down. It tells me Paul turned the world upside down. Imagine what we could do here. I think we could turn the community upside down for sure. I believe we could turn the world upside down. But it's going to take people getting in the Lord's will. Whenever we get discouraged because our timing doesn't line up with the Lord's, pray. Ask the Lord, Lord, I know that it's not lining up with my time, but give me the strength to keep holding out. The Lord always gives us an answer. Usually it's one of three answers. Yes, no, or not right now. Give us the strength and the wisdom to be able to follow along with what the Lord says. But this morning, more than anything, if, if you don't hear anything else that I said this morning at all, hear this. Jesus loves you. He cares about you. And He's calling you. Won't you answer the call of the Lord, whether it be salvation, whether it be baptism, whether it be church membership, whether it be to answer the call to the ministry, whatever it is. Would you answer it this morning? Maybe maybe the Lord's call for you is to just pray for those lost souls and to get out and witness to them. We have an altar this morning open for those who want to come pray for lost souls. I believe we need people to have a burden for lost souls. We need more people that care on whether or not people are going to spend eternity in hell or not. It's a real place, y'all. Hell is real, but heaven's just as real and so much sweeter than anything that we can imagine. And we'll be there with the Lord Jesus Christ. Won't you make the decision right now to be there with me as we all stand? We get ready for a verse of invitation.